city of Coventry has this afternoon witnessed some amazing scenes. It seems that most of the population of some 350,000 have turned out to pay tribute to the exploits of their footballers. Winners yesterday of the FA Cup, their first major trophy in their history of 104 years. Here is the team arriving at the end of a six and a half mile journey as they come in down High Street towards the old and the new council offices, towards what is known as Speaker's Corner. And really, in their wildest imagination, the players could not have expected the sort of reception they've been given. If ever there was proof of the effect of football on the human spirit, this afternoon has certainly provided it. People of all ages and from every possible vantage point have come to cheer their heroes and to say thank you. Because there can be no question that the exploits yesterday at Wembley have lifted thousands in the city of Coventry. Nick Pickering there with the cup, Cyril Regis with the special hat that uh, shows the Twin Towers of Wembley. There it is again. Dave Bennett holding the cup, Trevor Peake. And as we look back down High Street towards Broadgate, let's go back to the journey which started some three hours ago when the team arrived at their hotel by the M6. John Sinnott showing the cup after the team's overnight stay in rugby. George, well done. George, 104 years. Yeah, How are you looking forward to the uh, trip to the city? Good, we're really looking forward to it. You've got the cup. How are you looking forward to this drive through the city today? Oh, well, I've been looking forward to it all night, and uh, the people have already started coming out in numbers. It's going to be a really emotional day for you. Isn't it? Very much so, yes. I don't think it's been any more emotional than yesterday, though. Mate, you've got the FA Cup after 104 years. How are you looking forward to this uh, trip to the city today? Uh, I think it'll be very emotional for a lot of the players. Uh, you can see by the reception we received here, and this is just the beginning. Uh, I'm sure that nearly everybody in country will be out this I don't think the rain's going to make it. I was a bit worried about that, but it looks as though it's going to make absolutely no difference at all. Silly question, but you couldn't be happier. You seem in tremendous form this morning. Yeah, it's tremendous. I mean, we've had obviously a heavy night last night, and uh, hopefully it will carry on through the day. We're just enjoying every second of it. The George Curtis, after such a long wait for the cup, I wonder what it actually means to show it off to the people of Coventry. Well, I think it means a lot. The lads have been bubbling all night. You know, they did tremendously well. They were behind twice and come back and, you know, prove against all bookie odds that they are good enough to do th something. Um, coming in and looking at the crowds across the road from here, you know, they're, they're going to really enjoy it. We're all going to enjoy it. We decided that today is celebration day. Very emotional day for you after so many years. Of oh, I don't know about emotional, but it's good. It's nice. You know, we, we've set out to do something at the beginning of the season, and it's nice to know that something did come out of it, and it's great for the city, great for the lads, great for John, great for yourself, and great for everybody, really. The words of Mr. Coventry, George Curtis, taking the team off on their journey. Two buses, the front bus carrying the team, the second bus will be with the wives, and here, waiting to watch them, the nurses at the Wallsgrave Hospital. This was all kept secret, that the team would be coming around the hospital. Just look at the scenes there. Youngsters being given an advantage point, and what if they understand what's going on? This is the hospital, incidentally, where the Angels series was shot. BBC One series. And the nurses look pretty enough to take part. Flags on and off. Brian Kilcline with the cup, and nice to see Brian Burrows, who missed the final because of injury, is up there with them. That's a nice family scene. <laughs> Some outlandish hats. 
absolute mass of people everywhere you look. And everything seemingly coloured in sky blue. As are all the team. John Siddett doing the pointing, Nick Pickering up in the front. No easy job for the police as we go down Anstey Road in towards the city. Tribute to Dave Bennett, who got the so important equaliser, scored the winner in the uh, semi-final two. People hanging out of windows. Trevor Peak and Brian Kilcline, who shared the captaincy yesterday, sharing the cup now. Just a bit of room at this stage of the route for people to move along. Big downs at the front. I said they were on every possible vantage point. Look at that. Oh, Steve Edgley. Didn't get on. It's still a vital part. 19 in a uh, week's time. Oh, say. <laughs> John Sillett donning a sky blue wig. And we're on the edge of... Uh, Gosford Green, and now going off down Galson Road. Teddy Bear has pride of place. Steve Grizovich now holding the cup. All ages, everybody has become involved in what has to be one of the most Deserving successes in the history of the FA Cup for all the unlucky Gary Mabbott. The band of the Royal Fusiliers now leading them down Union Street. And look back, they had to play three matches away. They were an early goal down in the semi-final. That went into extra time. They were an early goal down in the final. That went into extra time. And they came out on top. Church of St. John the Baptist. His religion seems to be totally football. Doesn't need the encouragement, madam. Little conga between police car and the team bus. Mass crowds everywhere you look, and the bus finding it extremely difficult to make its way through, but the players in no hurry. Everywhere has been bedecked in sky blue and white since the semi-final victory. The banks, the shops, people's homes, Look at them all now, all on the roof there in the far distance. Many determined to follow. Well, they've had a lot of innovation at Coventry over the years, the Sky Blue specials, the Radio Sky Blue. The years of Jimmy Hill, which was said to be a miracle. And then the way was lost for a while until players who were there with Jimmy Hill have come back to run the show. George Curtis, John Sillett, Mick Cairns, who runs the reserves, and Mick Coop, who replaced John Sillett as a fullback, now the youth coach. And Graham Roger at the back there did so well when he came on. David Phillips now holding the cup. Brian Kilcline, who had to be helped up with crutches to get onto the bus. In the front seat, or the front stand. It's come to a halt again, and it's happened so often around this route. Steve Grizovich at the back, looking just slightly concerned. George Curtis in the far corner. Trevor Peake 
Mickey Jin. Ian Painter there too. One of the unlucky ones who didn't make the final team. But it's all about club spirit, isn't it? I don't if the traffic lights have ever been put to such a use before. Indeed, has there been a journey ever through the city of Coventry like this? Puts into shade the legendary one back in the 11th century for Lady Godiva. Nobody came to watch then on her commands. She sought to upstage her husband and make sure the people didn't have to pay the taxes. She said nobody should go because she wished to hide her modesty. And the legend has it that one peeping Tom was struck blind. Peeping Toms from every vantage point this afternoon to look at the footballers of 1987. Dave Bennett, Benno with the nice straw hat. Preparing perhaps for a Calypso. The directors at the back, including the vice chairman, Ted Stocker, who's made £50,000 on his team's success. And here they are coming down High Street having gone round Broadgate to the end of such a long journey. They will be on that balcony eventually when they can get off the bus. outside the old council building with the famous clock and then they move across into the new building Mickey Jin with the cup aloft is Steve Lee if he can make his way forward I hope he'll be talking to one or two of the heroes later Nick Pickering must say I think that hat takes the biscuit Cyril Regis haven't really been able to pick out the particular streets because the bus has been like a raft in the middle of an ocean an ocean of massed ranks of Coventry City people Keith Couchin come uh, right at the front there quiet but we can't talk to anybody of course until they get off the bus but we will be hoping to do so teddy bear or a rabbit inside the cup certainly there were no Coventry City rabbits 24 hours ago it was a marvellous comeback to a fine final and there's the old Coventry song going up in the background the Eaton Boating song originally Jimmy Hill and Charles Harold together rewrote it the words at least ever seen so many flags in your life patriotic British in the middle the Union Jack and John Sillett milking every last second really has emerged as a considerable character during this competition of success he and George Curtis appointed a year ago today quiet what an effective job he did on Glenn Hoddle Sport Hoddle's last performance for Tottenham Greg Downs David Phillips Greg Downs typical, typified uh, Coventry spirit yesterday he had a pretty horrendous opening 20 minutes against Chris Waddle but stuck to his guns and came through it 
If you're looking for the secret of Coventry City's success, it is surely their resilience. Still no attempt to get off the bus because there just is no way through. I think the bus has got to move a little bit further forward yet. One member of the constabulary seemingly unmoved as they have to be as finally George Curtis leads the way into the old council building followed by John Sinnott. Members of the board going through. Plenty of colour, but they haven't been concerned about the rain at all. It relented latterly, but it hasn't spoilt their day, and many of them have been there since well before noon to get a good vantage point at journey's end. Again, we look back towards Broadgate through the mass of flags. And when they get in, we hope we'll hear from the players. Has there ever been a welcome home quite like this? Um, well, I'm not no second like it. Um, I was involved with the North City one when they won the Milk Cup. We still got a bit hoarse with the shouting on the way here. But, um, there must be four or five times more people here than when I was on a milk cup. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Incredible. Great. The emotions of all the players seem absolutely perfect today. It was oh. an absolutely perfect weekend for you, wasn't it? Well, I mean, you can't write better than that, can you, in a script? It's... Well, for all the lads, it's a dream come true, really. I want to do now is win it again next year. And do you think that's on the cut? Why not? Why not? Maybe the league as well. We'll go for anything now. What about the uh, emotions last night? I gather the party went on a little late, didn't it? Yes, I got to bed about quarter to four, four o'clock, something like that, and um, up again at seven. So, I, you know, I didn't feel my best this morning, but, uh, you know, my dear. OK, just keep going. OK, Greg, well done. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Vicky Jim, a very happy man. But you look a little uh, hard and emotional. Oh, yeah, very tired, but brilliant, isn't it? Speaking to Oggy, and you know, he's been to a couple of finals with Liverpool, and he was saying, you know, even even the Liverpool fans aren't like this. You know, he's never experienced anything like it, and I certainly haven't. I reckon there's a quarter of a million people here. There's probably more. Really? Than actually get a final figure. Yeah, but it was pretty tough for you to actually get here, wasn't well, it? Well, it took us I don't know how long. It must have been over two hours to get here. So um, it's well worth it. Amazing. Well, what about the game? Is that just a blur from yesterday? Oh no, I can remember everything about the game. I really enjoyed the game. You know, I was, I was relaxed, you know, beforehand and all through the game, so I'm really pleased because I know people have said that the game goes very quickly, but, you know, it seemed to... Well, it, I, I enjoyed every moment of it. And I suppose everybody was talking about that miss in the end. I guess you've got to remember that. Too. Well, fortunately, it didn't, didn't matter in the end, but I know it would have wrapped the game up. You know, I think there's about five minutes left and it would have made it a lot easier for us, but thankfully it didn't matter. OK, Mickey Jin, thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Well, I think you're in a bit of pain today, aren't you, Brian, with that leg? Yeah, no, you can't really feel it for all the excitement that's going on today. Self-inflicted pain, I might add. But uh, besides that, it's been a great day. Well, here's another glass of champagne for you. Um, I've been told I'm not allowed to drink at all because <laughs> I'm going to hospital tonight. Oh, it's as bad as that, is it? Yeah. What about the, the scenes on the way here? They were really quite amazing. Oh, it's been they? absolutely electric. Um, they, put, they put me on the bus first, put me up in the front. And what, a, what an experience it's been coming into town. I think it's the longest journey I've ever took to come into town. I wonder whether playing for Coventry is ever going to be the same again after all this. I'll tell you one thing, you get, you get a taste of this, it makes you want to come back here and experience it again. But they say the first time's always the best. But I think if you keep coming back here every year, it'll still be the same. It's still magic. What a, what a fight back it was, though, by Coventry. I guess that's the thing you'll remember the most from Wembley. I think Coventry City uh, in the cup final showed a lot of heart and character. That came out in the game. We went behind very early on, we pulled it back, went behind again, pulled it back. And then our strength just showed through and uh, we managed to get the winner in the extra time. Okay. And I was just uh, very upset that I wasn't involved in the extra time football. Well, we'll do for you. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thank you very Cheers. much.
Well, Steve, what a week for you. A new baby daughter, and now this. Uh, it's been unbelievable, isn't it? It's, uh, so it's the best week of my life, really. I mean, uh, to, to have, like, say, a baby daughter on Thursday, then to win at Wembley yesterday, and then come back to these type of celebrations. I mean, you can't really describe them. So emotional this win has been for Coventry City, hasn't it? I mean, have you been aware, going on the route, just what it's meant to these people? Yeah, without doubt. I mean, most most football teams are in it for the football in respect that, you know, you think about Wembley. But there's been no success here for 104 years in, in terms of actually bringing, you know, bringing a trophy home. And, and you can hear them. Now they've got something, they're, they're just going wild. And, I mean, it's great to see. What about the celebrations last night? I gather they were, went on pretty late, didn't they? Very late. <laughs> well, very early, which way you look at it. You're not prepared to say anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I guess uh, everybody will be saying now, can you do anything to compare with this next season? It's going to really set you up to do a lot more, isn't it? Yeah, we, we've got an odd act to follow, but... Uh, I mean, Com Coventry City want to be successful. You've only got to listen to John and George. I'm sure they're not going to sit down and be content with what's happened this year. They're going to be building and, and building, like any side of like Liverpool have and Everton and teams like that. I know we can have some more success in years to come. We've just tasted a little bit of it now. I mean, we've got to come back and do it again. OK, thanks a lot, Steve. OK, cheers. Uh, there's no way that the crowd will move away. They want to enjoy every second, and the cup once again being lifted on high. Coventry City, the 41st winners of the FA Cup. Nick Pickering in the middle, Steve Grzovic back on the balcony with his glass of champagne. A year ago, he was a player with Scunthorpe. And I think there were going to be, there will be many curtain calls, to use a theatrical expression. John Sinnott. And a few words now from George Curtis, the managing director. Lloyd McGrath going in. And I understand that uh, as we look at Dave Bennett, enjoying the enthusiasm of the crowd down below him i know that uh, among those that uh, steve lee has with him is the man who a few moments ago i said uh, had earned himself fifty thousand pounds by putting a thousand pounds on coventry city at 50 to 1 back in round three when they beat bolton cyril regis with a few words well let's hear a few words now from ted stocker have we got the go ahead, Jet Steve? Well, Ted Stocker, I guess uh, that overnight bet of uh, £1,000 on Coventry City at 50 to 1 looks uh, very rosy indeed this morning, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it looks very rosy indeed. But we won the cup, and look at this, it's fantastic. The whole of Coventry, it's taken us two and a half hours to get here. All right. Just can't comprehend it. It's absolutely terrific. Absolutely terrific. So you're going to be honest and say you haven't thought about the money too much, is that well, right? Well, I mean, as you know, since yesterday, we've been on the bounce all the time. We had a party last night. And really, it's one of those things that you're going to sit down sometime and think about what you're going to do with it. It's such an enormous amount of money that the uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, pay off what my wife spent in Harrods last week buying a new outfit to come up here today. <laughs> it was as expensive as that, was it? Eh? it was well, it made a reasonable size chunk of it anyway, yeah. Right. From the director's point of view, what about next season? I guess everybody's going to wonder what plans you might have. Our plans are to improve the facilities at the ground. We're going to do a lot of work in the um, a lot of work in the summer, and I, I would imagine that George and John will start thinking about what they need to do with the team. But we've got a wonderful team, really wonderful team. Thanks very much, Ted. Thank you. Oh, the vice chairman uh, making it clear, really, in a way, that the standards have been set for Coventry City to follow what they achieved yesterday and with the sort of team spirit they showed at Wembley why shouldn't they thought also it was interesting when he said it's so difficult to comprehend and I imagine that for those for whom sport is something to be ignored or just a pastime to keep fit maybe very difficult to understand these scenes that we're seeing but the people of the city have been warmed and uplifted by a collection of young men 
who just kick a football around. The elephant, which is part of the badge, the insignia of Coventry City. And the cup in the background, and everybody wants to make it known that they were here on the greatest day in the history of Coventry City Football Club. And some may say, maybe, of the city itself. A city which, during the war, suffered so much behind that building of the council lie the ruins of the old cathedral of st michael which was virtually raised to the ground back in november 1940 during the second world war but coventry was rebuilt a new cathedral was built the new council houses house that we just saw was rebuilt And then the emphasis that we're seeing in front of us, the evidence that we're looking at, certainly the spirit has been rebuilt too. But uh, I know that we can uh, go to an interview with John Sillett. Well, John Sillett, you said all along your name was on the cup. I guess now people will say you had a bit of knowledge that no one else had. And now they're going to believe us, and now they're going to believe us. Yes, wonderful, isn't it? There it is. A bit of silver we've worked so hard for. The lads have been brilliant, haven't they? I reckon a quarter of a million people have come out to watch you. It's been certainly one of the most emotional homecomings ever for football. Well, what the players have done for Coventry City, look what they've done for the people, the public. You know, they've done wonders for them. And I think that they are paying a wonderful respect to the players. And we think this has really got us all emotional, all uptight, and we just don't know. Our next act to beat this, we just don't know what it can do. I guess the only thing you can do, really, is go away quietly in a couple of days and try and take it all in, really. No, the thing we've got to do now, Steve, is build on this and win the First Division Championship. That would be when I would be able to say, thank you, Coventry. I think I've helped a little bit. I'm going to go and retire, Dad. The next season should be one to remember. Yes. Yeah, we'll be all right next season. We're, they all know we're about now, Steve. But what a final it was, really. I guess from a football point of view, it presented those at Wembley and all the millions watching with the game they'll always remember. Well, you know, I've said all along, if we're going to play football, we'll play it with style. If we're going to win, we'll win with a bit of class and style and touch. And I think we've done it that way. And what about Spurs? In a sense, did you have just a few thoughts of uh, disappointment for them too? Oh, you know, you gear yourself for their position. I'd give myself for losing. You know, you've got to, I think. And you just accept this little thing here and say, well, that's a bonus. You know, to, but David Pleat, his players, all, all the Spurs fans gave us nothing but credit, and I thought they were a credit to football. Right, John, we'll let you go and get some more champagne. From us all, very well done indeed. Stephen, thank you. And lift that cup up and let's have a look at it. Hold on. We'll get that Coventry name there on. There it is. I'll spill my champagne. There you are. How about that? Wonderful, isn't it? I'm just going to go and shout to those good people out there. Feel that for me. I'm going to nip there. Coventry's name on the cup after 104 years. And as you can see, the crowd, some of them moving away, but some hoping for another view of the successful players. John Siddick there with a message for football, and indeed a message for sport in general, that it's not all about winning, it's about winning with style, and certainly they did that, and they did it the hard way. Indeed, I saw one or two uh, T-shirts yesterday which referred to the Coventry Tour, and understand a bit, because it all began at Highfield Road against Bolton, but then it was away at Old Trafford, away at the Victoria Ground Stoke, and away at Hillsborough in the sixth round, and then away, obviously, once again, back at Hillsborough, in the semi-final. Well, they borrowed this chant from elsewhere, you'll never walk alone. Plenty of young faces. And it's a proud moment, I'm sure, for Councillor Mrs. Winnie Lakin, the Lord Mayor, and the Lady Mayoress, her daughter, Mrs. Shirley Bosey, and 
control changes in the City Hall next Thursday because taking over will be Councillor Jeff White and he's got quite an act to follow certainly the uh, year of Mrs Winnie Lakin couldn't have finished on a higher note and she like everybody who's watching these pictures must have great delights in what a football match has done to this city the atmosphere has been electric here since the semi-final I was here last week looking around and everywhere one went there were favors of sky blues there's a bank just away to the right opposite the new buildings that you're now looking at and that was full of sky blue banners and exhortations for them to be successful I wonder how many of these people managed to get a ticket they were disappointed yesterday they're certainly delighted today the outsiders even in the final could have got three to one on Coventry City winning but when they did led by a man who came to them from Snowdown Colliery in Kent back in 1956 George Curtis and made 486 league appearances for them by John Sinnott played for them between 1961 and 1965 was then sold to Plymouth Argyle for 5,000 pounds came back after being a coach at Bristol City and uh, being manager of Hereford and then was sacked returned as youth team coach and a year ago today went into harness with George Curtis and we can now talk I understand to another of the players Steve Lee talking to Keith Houchin one of the scorers yesterday well Keith Houchin Keith Houchin, alias Roy of the Rovers. That was a pretty good end to the script, wasn't it, yesterday? Alias Roy Race, yes. I went out on the perfect note again yesterday, didn't I? It's been an incredible cut run for you. What is it about the cup that brings out the game in you, do you think? I don't know. It's incredible. It could be fate. Maybe I was fated, I don't know. Our name was definitely on the cup, though, wasn't it? It certainly was. And what about this reception today? It's certainly one of the most emotional I think I've ever seen. I've never seen player. anything like this in my life. It's incredible. I mean, I, I've been saying I knew what to expect at Wembley, because, I mean, like we all do, we know what to expect. But to come out today and see this many people, incredible. I know John Sillett has called you uh, slouchy howchy in training. I don't suppose he'll ever do that again, will he? <laughs> oh, you've never seen me in training. <laughs> now, John Sillett said uh, the other day that he called you slasher, but I guess that was just a bit of an in-joke. But certainly, you really enjoyed the occasion yesterday. Oh, I loved it. I mean, I, I've said it before. I've, I've been looking forward to playing at Wembley for the last ten years, never thinking that I would ever do it. So I was determined to enjoy every minute of it, milk every minute of it, and remember every minute of it. And um, I'll, I'll never forget anything about, about yesterday. And I guess you've looked at that uh, header one or two times on the television video, haven't you? I've seen it once last night at the, at the um, banquet we had for the players and the families and that. It looked a lot better on the telly, actually, than it felt when I did it. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. And what about the, the future for Coventry City? Next season, I guess, people are going to have a good deal more respect for you, aren't they? They're going to have a, a lot more respect for us. I think the main thing is for us as a team and as a club is to not let this be a flash in the pan and make sure we, we keep up the same sort of performances and the same sort of level. Maybe we won't get to another cup final, that might be asking too much. But to go out next year and, and do just as well as we've done this year, league-wise and that, you know? Right, OK, Keith, thanks very much indeed. I think we've got to, we've got to Graham Roger here, who was one of the... Uh, the lucky men who came on yesterday. Now, now, Graham, did you enjoy that experience? It was a brief one, but you seemed yeah. to settle very quickly, didn't you? Yeah, I found it quite easy to settle in, actually. I was very surprised myself, although I was extremely nervous. Um, I just seemed to pick up the pace of the game straight away. There was a good deal of emotion in the game, but you didn't exactly look nervous when you came on. In fact, I think most people thought you played in a very assured way. I think it was a surprise of being, you know, all of a sudden just thrown in. Uh, for one minute, I was sitting on the bench watching the game. The next minute, I was out there playing. I didn't really have time to think about it, which I suppose um, kept the nerves calm, really. And what about this reception here? Absolutely superb. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Absolutely tremendous. And what about the other players? They're similarly affected by this song. Yeah, it is. It's quite emotional, actually, to be honest. You know, it's very moving. The fans have been absolutely superb. Not only yesterday, 
you know, it was absolutely great. The turnout today has been brilliant as well. And I guess next season is going to be one Coventry City will we'll relish in a way. Hopefully, yeah. Um, I would only hope we can uh, build on this platform and go on to uh, greater things. Graham, thanks very much indeed for joining us. And I think uh, we'd like to say uh, well done to all the Coventry yeah. lads. Thank you. And we've got uh, the chairman here, John Poynton, just come to join us. John. Are your nerves absolutely shattered? Uh, yes, I think so. I think we've had sort of, uh, what, 48 hours. Uh, it's been chaos, and the culmination of the uh, trip through the uh, streets of the city were fantastic. Um, Mind-boggling, in fact. Um, yes, just, just one more function uh, tonight, the uh, civic reception uh, uh, dinner, and then uh, back to normal tomorrow. Will there ever be back to normal for Coventry City? I guess that's what everybody will wonder, because this club will never be the same again, surely. No, I don't think it will, but um, when I say back to normal, I shall be at High Highfield Road tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and uh, we, uh, we plan for uh, next season from tomorrow. This homecoming has perhaps eclipsed nearly every other FA Cup, one, FA Cup uh, homecoming we've ever seen, I think. I think it more likely has. I think it's a culmination of many things. A depressed uh, city, um, industry-wise, they wanted something to cheer, and they've got the football club, and it can only be good for the football club and also for the city in general. But what about the game itself? It wasn't a bad FA Cup final, was it? It was tremendous. When the game finished and I uh, shook hands with Irving Scholar, the Tottenham uh, chairman, I said to both him and to Burke Millerchip, I said, the only winner today was football. And, of course, the emotions went on last night. There was a, quite a party, I gather, near rugby. Yes, and I've still got to get uh, George Curtis because he managed to put my uh, bedroom right underneath the disco and it went on until 5 o'clock, so I've still got a thumping headache. Well, let's hope that disappears. John Point and all the Coventry directors, well done. My pleasure. Thanks. Okay. Well, has there ever been a better excuse for having a thumping headache? Still, the younger members of the Coventry City Supporters Club, which has embraced just about the whole city this afternoon, want to stay on in the hope of uh, another glimpse of the players. And this really has been, in a way, in football terms, the second mir miracle of uh, Coventry. The first came under Jimmy Hill, and for a while the impetus was lost when he left. But they have remained in the first division since 1967. That's a 20-year run that only Arsenal, Everton and Liverpool can better. There'll be no hurry to take down all the banners around the city because this is a weekend that they will remember for many a long day. Perhaps what Tottenham should have remembered that after all the relegation battles that Coventry have had, they always win their last match. This time it was the FA Cup. Marvellous scenes in Coventry there, and just a reminder there'll be a chance to see highlights of the Sky Blues' victorious weekend in Midlands today at 6.35 tomorrow.